I'm not the guy that can play in front of 12,000 people on guitar. I would be like, I mean, I had never played a paid gig when we, when we played the show at the farm market where Jamie Johnson showed up, that was my first paid gig. Like I'm not a guy to go out and play live shows, but I can tell you, I was so like, um, I was just so at peace being up there. Like it just felt like that's where I was supposed to be. And that, and with all of this, it has been like, there's no way that Chris from six months ago could handle what's gone on the last two weeks. But I feel just so empowered from all of it. And, um, I don't know. I'm telling you, like, again, I'm not, I'm not anybody special and I'm certainly not here to preach to anybody, but just from coming from somebody who was just really, just in a really just fucked up place. Like, and I use that word like with discretion, but in this case it describes like where I was like that guy found a lot of peace, like from this book and from, from looking at things in a different way. Yeah. From looking at things through the eyes well, yeah, of scripture. And I think for me, it was like, I had been in, you know, I'd been in church growing up and I had been, I'd been exposed to all of that, but I'd found a lot of, um, a lot of theatrics and a lot of politics in church and in religion when I was younger. And so it just immediately turned me off to so it. So if you can take us to like, what was like the day you picked it up? What, what was the feeling that you had? Like what caused you to act? What, what was it like when you did it? Yeah. I mean, I'd been reading it here and there off and on and I had for like, off and on for a long time. Like, cause I, again, I was introduced to it as a kid, but it was really just like, um, I remember I'd went to the, I went to the ER for everything that was going on. I mean, I thought I was seriously going to die. Like I was having shooting pains up under my jaw, down in my wrist and my leg, like just cardiovascular 101 symptoms. Of course I'm 31. I had been like I could run four miles without stopping. No problems. Like I knew my heart was strong, but You're I just, just freaking out. Yeah. But I went and did that. And, uh, I remember being in the truck after that, just like, and I just, yeah, I just had a breakdown moment. I was just, cr just crying and, um, was just, just, I just felt hopeless. Like, like almost the way a child feels hopeless when they, you know, like you can't find your parent or something like a, like a four year old that can't find his parents or something. I was just like, just didn't have anything left in me. And, um, I don't know. I just, uh, I just decided like right then and there, I was like, I know I can't do this anymore. And, but I know, I know that I can, I know there's things that I need to do. And I just, I was just, just told God, I was like, just let me do it. Like, and I'll give all this shit up. I'll give up the weed and I'll quit getting drunk and I'll quit. Um, I'll quit being so angry about things and I'll just like, well, I'll just call it good. Whatever I've done up from, from up until I was 30 or whatever, 31, like I'll, we'll just call that good and I'll start over again. And, um, I'll make him the focus and not me. And I just tried to, tried to let my, let my ego and everything that I was just let that go and just focus on. Cause, cause obviously like, it's not just me. I've seen it with even other people I know. And I see it with, celebrities and everything, but I don't know. I just feel like, um, we're in such a weird place right now in the world that I feel like God's working through inadvertently through certain people to get, to get his point across. Um, so take me to what, what you did. Did you start reading the Bible? Like, what did you do? I just changed my perspective. Um, you changed, you, you, I quit worrying about me and I started worrying about what, what it is that I'm supposed to do. You know, like it talks in the Bible about, um, about being a servant and, you know, giving up, I guess my desire and my will and whatever it is that I, that I want to do. Like, um, I don't, I don't know the best way to describe it, but it's about, it's about trying to use what I have as a tool versus doing what I can in the moment to give what, give myself whatever satisfaction that it is I'm trying to get, you know? It's about letting, trying to let go of your ego, I guess, in a way. Um, mm. And I mean, people, people pursue that mentality without faith. I mean, it's the idea of there being something bigger than you, but I think inherently all human beings idolize something like it talks in the Bible about false idols. We all have false idols, like whether it's our phone or it's a celebrity or it's something we do, or it's our addiction to food or drugs or whatever. But like, it's very difficult for a human to be the biggest thing on their hierarchy. There's always something above us, right? Because we're always in pursuit of something bigger than whatever it is in that moment. 
And I think for me, it was just about taking everything else, all the distractions and all the other things in my life away and just ensuring that at least, and look, I'm, we're all, we're all, we all sin and we all do stupid things. Like we're all just people, nobody's special or righteous. People sometimes act like they're special and righteous, but we're all just the same thing. Like, um, but it's just about trying to make that, make that my idol, make, make, make God and the concept of what it is that he wants done on this earth, my idol versus anything else. You know, like we all serve, we all serve some master, whether we realize it or not. So why not let it be the master that is above all. And so when you made this transformation in your mind, did you then start reading scripture like regularly? Like what did you start doing? Yeah. Well, that was different. Well, it was, what really, I guess it's like now I don't read it. I don't read it because I feel like I should read it to be a better person. It's like now I, I try to read it for the guidance within it. And I'm still in the infancy stages of a lot of this. Like I've read a lot of Psalms, Proverbs and Ecclesiastes and Luke and um, there's other good books, but just trying to, I don't know, like trying to restructure, I guess, on a granular level, like I guess the neural pathways in my brain that have certain habits and certain ways of thought, like I've tried to retrain that to, um, you know, like there's, there's things it says like, uh, and I'll be very brief with this, I promise. But like one thing, ironically, it's, uh, Proverbs 420, which I thought you would like. <laughs> so if there's anything better, Perfect. But, Read um, it. preach my son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart for they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body above all else. Guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Keep your mouth free from perversity. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or the left. Keep your foot from evil. But um, That's pretty fucking profound. But the whole book of Proverbs is like that. Like, it's not preachy. It's not, it's not what you think. Like, it's... It's like, it's good guidance. It's like good guidance that you would want a father to give to his son. 